Hey, what's up guys? This is Chris Merritt with Beyond Strength Performance Nova, and I'm going to do a summary of the seminar that we did last night on fat loss. So if you were there, this would be some stuff for you to review. Uh, and if you weren't there, this will give you a pretty good idea of what we talked about. So where do we begin? Well, if your goal is really fat loss, it's probably a pretty good idea to talk about nutrition. Because first I was going to say nutrition seems like a good place to start, but I wanted to put more emphasis on it than that. So I thought something along the lines of nutrition seems like the absolute most important, pivotal, central place to start would maybe drive that point home a little bit better. And if we're going to talk about nutrition, the first thing I would want to do with someone is really take a look at what their daily food intake looks like. And there's two main things I would be looking for. Quantity and quality. So the quantity of their food is probably going to give me a pretty good idea of what's going on with their scale weight. The quality of their food is going to give me a pretty good idea of what's going on with their body composition. Now you as an individual, as you're thinking about this and maybe reviewing in your head or if you have a physical journal in front of you, your own daily food intake, what's your biggest challenge? And I think this can be broken into four easy categories. Do you struggle with breakfast? Is it lunch? Maybe it's dinner. Or is it the snacks that you're having throughout the day? And I would then go on with whatever your biggest challenge is. What was your plan? Maybe you didn't have one. Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to use the analogy of a home builder to drive this point home. Can you imagine if a home builder showed up to build your house and he didn't have a plan, he was just winging it? Or maybe you're saying, well, I know what to do. I have a plan. It's in my head. I don't need to follow a written plan. I have this. Well, would you trust the home builder that doesn't use blueprints? He shows up and he says, I've built hundreds, maybe even thousands of homes. I know what I'm doing. You probably wouldn't because one centimeter could make a huge difference in the structural integrity of your home. Did you shop? If you did have a plan, did you shop for it? Because going back to the home builder analogy, it'd be pretty hard for him to follow the blueprint if he didn't have the materials. Show up to the work site and go, hmm, we probably need lumber and nails and all the tools and hardware to build this house. And going a little further into that idea, he doesn't wait until the day of and show up and go, all right, guys, today we need this. Everything's pre-planned. Plans who is going to do the shopping, what they need to get, and when they're going to do it. Then the builder prepares everything ahead of time. This saves the builder a ton of time. What I mean is they don't show up to the work site and dump everything into one, gi one gigantic heaping pile of materials. They would shop for the things they need and probably lay them out in an order that would help them to save time on putting together the home, or even think of uh, fabricated homes where they bring in sections of walls already completely built and it goes together that much faster. And looking at a dream home like this, there's no way that this happened from someone winging it. This happens from following a well-designed plan. So, what will your plan be? It's pretty safe to say that we'll talk about the things that I already mentioned earlier, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we can go on and add snacks later. And you might be saying, well, I get that, but I don't even know what to eat. Good, let's start there. We're gonna break it into four categories. The first category being protein. And then this is not the, the end-all be-all list of protein, just a couple of examples here. Chicken, fish, beef, bison, turkey, eggs, Greek yogurt, tofu, wild game, protein powders. Fats, olive oil, flax oil, fish oil, krill oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, almonds, cashews, walnuts, macadamias, avocado, chia seeds, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, hemp seeds. Could go on and on. Vegetables, spinach, asparagus, broccoli, cabbage, celery, tomato, cauliflower, kale, onions, peppers. Once again, this is a very short list. Vegetables could go on and on. 
And finally, carbohydrates. This could be your fruits. Uh, this could be your pastas and things like that. And here I have blueberries, raspberries, apples, bananas, pineapples, strawberries, sweet potatoes, sprouted grain breads, brown rice, quinoa, and brown rice pasta. Then what we do is like we plan our meals from left to right. So those categories that I just talked about, protein first, then fats, then vegetables, and finally carbohydrates. How much, maybe you're asking. Well, I'm going to steal from Precision Nutrition, and I'm going to use their portion sizes that are based upon the size of your hand. So we'll go through this for females. For females, you would have a palmed size portion of protein. You would have one thumb of fats. You would have one fist of vegetables. And one cupped palm full or one cupped handful of carbohydrates. For men, we would simply double these portions. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, what about macronutrients? What about this supplement? What about that? And what I'm showing you here is a very basic plan. <clears throat> this is by, by no means the, the ultimate way of doing this, but if we're going to work with someone on their nutrition, we're going to look and see if they have the basics down first. We're not going to go to some crazy strategy to, to work off of. If we want to go even simpler, if you look at the background of this image, Precision Nutrition also has this My Plate, and this would be their anytime meal that's not right after a workout. And that's an idea of what your plate should look like. The next level up would be what I had just shown with the hand portion sizes. So if we're going to go with a plan like this, it would be a good idea to pre-plan your meals for the week, just like the builder that plans his plan for the house. And it would be a great idea to do this at least 90% of your meals if you want to see your fat loss goals through. Write down this plan in a food journal. A daily planner is great for this. The one that I'm going to bring up on the screen here is not the best one to use because it stops at 6 p.m. I would actually prefer you use one that goes longer because chances are you're going to eat after 6 p.m. But for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to give you an example of what this would look like. And what I'm showing you here is not what I did eat, but an example of what I would eat. This is not really my nutrition plan. This would be more along the lines of something for a female. But anyways, 6 a.m., a super shake. You can read there and see the contents of that shake. Then at 9 a.m., you're going to plan to have this three-egg omelet with a slice of Ezekiel bread. At noon, the salad. At 2 p.m., the Greek yogurt with whey protein, handful of fruit. 3.30, you're going to train, have some BCAAs. And at 5 p.m., you're going to have a chicken breast, roasted broccoli, cupped handful of sweet potato, and possibly another snack before bed. But write this down. This is your plan. Then what you can do is you can put check marks next to it after you complete the plan. If you miss the plan, put an X over it. Do Put a line through it. Whatever you want to do that you can go back and review how close you are to the 90% rule. Plan your free meals for the week as well. These are best planned for social functions and events. What I mean by that is it's not best to say, well, I'm going to eat whatever the heck I want. I'm going to stay in all by myself and sit in front of the TV. Use these events to go out and be social. So now that we made the plan, it's a good idea to shop for the plan. When we go shopping, we want to go with a list. and We want to stick to the list of what we'll need to follow our plan. The list could be handwritten, as I prefer, or you could go with some of the newer school methods of apps for your phone. Whatever works, use it. Predetermine the days that you will shop. What I mean is you want to start the week off prepped for success. If you wake up and go to work and then go to the gym and come home and You've made terrible choices all day because you didn't have the things to take to work. And you come home and you don't have what you need for dinner. You are not well on your way to fat loss success. Start with shopping. If you don't have the ingredients to on the plan, don't even worry about working out. I'm not saying that if you screw up your nutrition a little bit, don't worry about working out. I'm saying, like the example I just used, that if you're going to the gym and you don't have the things at home to be successful, you've got it all wrong if your goal is really fat loss. So next, the logical step would be to prepare the food. Just like the builder that pre-prepares things to save himself lots of time and stress, we could do the same thing. And I'm not saying that right off the bat, all right, you need to start prepping every single meal ahead of time. 
Let's go back to one of the initial questions. What's your biggest struggle? Let's start there. Prepare that or those meals ahead of time. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, you know, I, uh, I, I could really use some more information to help me do this, or I just want this done for me. I'm not huge on apps and websites, but I have a lot of clients that have used them with great success, and I'm gonna show a few of the ones that, that uh, people have used and like. So the first thing we're gonna talk about are one-stop shop websites. So these are, uh, some of them are membership site. One of them is a membership site. The other one is completely free. So the first one is called fitnessvt.com. This is a membership site. There are three levels of membership. And uh, we've had a member use this that has gone from, I don't know if I'm gonna get the exact right, but I know he started around 360 some pounds uh, last summer and he is already um, down to, I believe just broke the 300 pound mark. Um, so he's down into the 290s now. And we're not talking about a crash diet and he feels like crap and everything else. Um, he's had a complete uh, change in lifestyle and um, just really, really improved for the better with the principles that he's taken from this website. And my understanding of it is that essentially he goes on every morning and updates his body weight and his body composition. And he's using bioelectrical impedance, which is not the most ideal way in the world of doing it, but he's doing it at the same time of day and the same condition. So he's getting somewhat reliable results from it. Um, consistency of results, probably not reliable results, consistent results um, to base his numbers off of. And based on his success, it's working. The next one we're going to talk about is eatthismuch.com. This is one that was also uh, pointed out to me by a member of the gym. And what I did here in this example on the screens, I actually uh, did this to mess around with it to take these screenshots for this presentation. And I typed in and I picked out completely arbitrary calories. I want to eat 3,700 calories across five meals. And I would like to eat that under the style of paleo. I highlighted that. So I click generate and this comes up. And this is pretty freaking cool. So this is done for you. This is telling you exactly what to eat for the day, what the quantities are. And what I did was I hovered the mouse over the pan seared salmon with avocado. And, and I, got, I got yelled at last night for pronouncing it wrong. And I know I'm going to do it wrong again. I said remoulade or remoulade. I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> um, but I, I highlighted that. And it says in here how long it's going to take to prep, what the cook time is, what the... Uh, what the um, macronutrient breakdowns are for the serving, calories, how much it's gonna cost you, and you can click and you can get the, the full recipe. Um, and let's say that you don't like this, you could hit a button to basically spin a wheel and bring up another thing that would still keep you on your macronutrient breakdown that the, the system provided for you. It's pretty cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about shopping lists, apps for shopping lists. And I'm only really gonna put one up here and it's called Wonderlist. And this is not one that is only for grocery shopping. You can create lists for all kinds of things, TV shows that you wanna watch, things you need to do with the family, um, but one of them is a grocery list. Check things off as you go. And uh, this keeps you on task of what you, uh, sticking to what you need and not just aimlessly wandering the grocery store and, and coming home with random things. If you're interested in other ones, I mean, there's tons of them. Just search shopping lists in your app store, whether you have Google or Android. Tons of them come up, or, uh, yeah, Google or Android, tons of them come up. I guess iOS or Android is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, tracking. So this is the one that's probably most popular with people that I work with. And it's an app called My Fitness Pal. And My Fitness Pal, when you start it up, takes you through these screens. It asks you what your goal is. So I just did a, a random one here. I said, lose weight. I said, I want to lose 10 pounds. It asked me how active I am. I clicked on active. Told it that I'm 5'9", 180 pounds. My weekly goal is to lose one pound per week. And it came up with this calorie uh, total for me. Then with that, it just starts to have you enter in what you're eating for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, for your snacks. And what you can do is you can use this in combination with that written out plan that we talked about. So you can create the plan which is gonna give you a pretty good idea of food quality. You can see what you're eating, what the source of your food is um, by writing it down like that. When you do this, it will start to give you the macronutrient and, and caloric breakdowns. So the combination of the two can be very, very good, but this is not for everyone and it's not completely necessary. And finally, if you're interested in just more general information on nutrition, there's a lot of uh, sources out there. And unfortunately, there's a lot of conflicting sources of information out there. and 
I would say hands down the best source for you to go to if you want to learn more about these principles is Precision Nutrition. PrecisionNutrition.com. Click on the blog. They have all kinds of really cool infographics, one of which I use in the background on a few slides prior. And uh, PrecisionNutrition.com is absolutely awesome. You can find tons of useful information on there. If you're interested in a book, I would absolutely recommend the book Fat Loss Happens on Monday by Josh Hillis um, and some of the other stuff written by Dan John. Uh, much of what I'm talking about today is highly influenced by Fat Loss Happens on Monday. So when you read the book, yes, you will see that it does very much so mirror this talk. That is my number one book recommendation on this stuff, especially for being um, quite a light read and things that you can apply immediately and don't have to uh, get all the, the science background of everything. Just read it, implement it, and go. Now, let's talk about exercise to support our fat loss goals. It starts with practicing movement. Many of you hopefully will get this joke. We're talking about practice. Not a game, but practice. What I mean is that we think about slowing things down, doing things the right way, and not going, oh, you want to lose fat? Let's do something crazy. Let's just get you this. We just got to burn tons of calories and beat you up. No. This first part will be familiar. We need to create a plan. We then need to assess the individual and see if we need to modify anything within the plan. So essentially what I'm getting at is that we need to individualize a plan for each individual. What we will do is we'll plan full body movement-based programs that are based on squatting, hinging, pushing, pulling, lunging, stepping, rotating, resisting, running, jumping, crawling, carrying. You may be able to come up with some more things to put in there, but my point is that we're gonna base these programs on movements and not on chest, back, biceps, triceps, things like that. We're gonna do bigger, bang for your buck, metabolic demand movements. And then just like we had a priority of going from protein across to carbohydrates with our nutrition approach, we have a priority of working from power all the way across to conditioning with our strength and conditioning approach. So power being things like medicine ball throws, jumps, and more explosive lifts progressing into strength, which would be bigger uh, compound movements, meaning full body multi-joint movements that are going to be things like squats, deadlifts, RDLs, presses, pulls. Then into our assistance work, which is also going to be pushes, pulls, or presses and pulls, lunges, um, stepping. The big difference is that a lot of time, while it still can be bilateral or both sides working together, um, we usually progress people to doing more unilateral or single side work on their assistance work. And then finally progressing into conditioning. And this could be a lot of things that are outside the scope of this presentation. But your, your programming should have a hierarchy along these lines. It could be a little bit different. Depending on what coach you work with, it could be different. But essentially, if we break it down, most people are going to come to a conclusion of following principles like this. So what I'm going to do is lay this out into an example of two days here. So an example of an A day or your, your first day of the week would be some type of a medicine ball throw followed by an anterior core drill, which could be a plank, just keep things simple. We would then follow that up with a, with a mobilization or a mobility drill that would be based on the individual's FMS, what they need most. Then we would work in a squat pattern, an upper body pull pattern, and some type of a stability drill that would complement the mobility drill that we did in A3. Then we would go to a single leg hinge, so this would be like a single leg RDL, single leg hip thrust, things like that, depending on the training age of the individual. And then we would work our way into a, an upper body push. Because we're going for uh, fat loss with this plan, we want to work more, um, more work into the program, for lack of better terms. Just throw in a carry here. Finish off with some type of conditioning. I just threw a random, uh, random example in here of assault bike intervals. Many of you may know the assault bike as the Airdyne bike. An example B day that would be complementary to that would be another type of medicine ball throw. Rather than doing anterior core, we'd do lateral core work. That mobility drill again. Instead of, squan instead of squatting, we would do a, um, a hinge movement, so probably a deadlift or some variety of it. Instead of a pull, we would do a push, and we would do that stability drill again. Instead of a single leg hinge, we can go with a lunge. This could also be a step, like a step up variation. Instead of push, we would pull, and we would throw another carry variation in. 
And then just like that day, we would finish off with some type of finisher. And just for example's sake, I threw in battling rope intervals here. On your off days, we would work in some type of low intensity cardio to complement your harder strength days. If someone was working out three days a week, we could do this program as week one, A, B, A. Week two could be B, A, B, so on and so forth. But the main thing to take away from this is that strength is a skill and it needs to be practiced. I cannot stress it enough that we're not just throwing a bunch of crap at the wall and picking random exercises to beat people up and go, well, we're just gonna set this circuit up today and we're gonna work our butt off and people are gonna be sweating like crazy and they're gonna know they gotta work out. No, we're gonna have people train to increase these different things, power, strength, whatever their energy system um, demands are. And we're gonna individualize this approach. We're gonna pick movements that people, you know, there needs to be a level of challenge with the movement, but there also needs to be uh, selection of those movements that are based on the individual's current capability and we use the FMS to do that. In terms of conditioning, um, in the simplest way we could use resting heart rate to figure out if they should have more of an aerobic bias or if they can handle something a little um, higher like, uh, you know, intervals that, you know, we'd probably never go to negative um, rest intervals, meaning like they're doing tons of work, short rest, tons of work, short rest. Um, but if we were gonna do something like that, we would make sure that the individual is very aerobically fit first. So I know I only threw exercises in there. Well, what about sets and reps and things like that? Once again, to get into the, the details of exactly what we would do for that is well beyond the scope of this presentation, but essentially we would moderate volume, intensity, and and density across each week. So we would have slight variability of, of those three things across each week. And we would build people up and we would uh, do this across four weeks, okay? And then after the four weeks, we would add, remove, modify exercises um, about every four weeks. If someone's working out three days a week, it's gonna be about every four weeks. If they're working out two days a week, it would be about every six weeks. We already touched on this a lot in what I just said, but for the assessment, this is not the only thing we use, but one of the main things that we use to give us more of a global perspective of fundamental human movement on the individual is the functional movement screen to find out if we need to add, remove, or modify, modify anything from the plan. And the plan could be that basic template that we just used a few slides back. Another thing in the assessment would be picking the benchmark of your choice to evaluate your success. So if the goal is fat loss, there's three things that come to mind circumference measurements, body fat, and your weight. You could choose the one that is easiest for you to do. You know, circumference measurements you could do in the comfort of your own home without anyone having to see. You know, get hip, waist, and thigh measurements. Um, body fat, you know, like I talked about with the client earlier, there are some bioelectrical impedance or like handheld or the scales that you stand on. And while they are not the most reliable in the world, if you're doing it the same time of day in consistent conditions, uh, they, they can still be a good thing to use. And weight, if you're using the same scale, usually the same day of the week, um, under the same conditions, it's probably pretty reliable. What's the best choice? I would say a combination of all three, and I've actually taken that idea from Josh Hillis in the book that we just talked about. So, as you go to embark on your fat loss journey, you would start with getting baseline circumference measurements, body fat, and weight. And then what you would do is, you would do one each week. So every three weeks, you would do them again. So you'd do circumference on week one, body fat week two, weight on week three. Week four, you would do circumference measurements again. And what this is good for is that, let's say that you do your uh, body fat one week, and it says that it went up. Well, if that was all you were going by, you'd probably be very discouraged. But what if the following week, your weight was down, and the week after that, your circumference measurements were down a little bit too? There's a good chance that there was some type of error in the body fat reading. On the other hand, if you did body fat and it went up, weight went up, circumference measurements went up, there's a very slim likelihood that all three, um, all three were wrong. And you probably do have something you need to look at modifying in the program. But if the program doesn't work, we don't just completely crumple it up and throw it away. What we do is we look at how the plan needs to be modified for you. In terms of movement, the FMS will tell us what that would be, and a coach's keen eye 
may catch things that our screen won't. In terms of nutrition, uh, it, it could just be looking at your food quality and your food quantity. Further, we need to look at stress. Do you get sufficient sleep? Are you in pain? There's many other contributors to stress. Sickness, financial stress, work stress, spouse stress. The list could go on and on. And while you might not think that those are related to your fat loss goal, exercise is a stress. And if you have lots of other stressors going on in your life, we need to look at moderating the amount of stress that we're going to apply in the workout because the body can only handle so much stress. So what we did in this presentation last night was at the end, we rolled out a big announcement. And obviously you guys can't ask questions over here, but I'll just go and say that if you have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment right below this and I will be sure to get back to you and answer any questions that you have. But what we did was we unrolled a new program with our cheesy drum roll sound going into it, we enrolled a new program, a program that's gonna be focused on fat loss. And we're looking for eight individuals ready to commit to their fat loss goal to take part in a combination of small group strength and conditioning training plus nutrition habit coaching three days a week. This program is gonna run from Monday, March 2nd to Friday, May 22nd every Monday and Wednesday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. as well as Friday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Get you home a little bit earlier on Friday. It's gonna happen right here at Beyond Strength Performance Nova in Dallas, Virginia. And the program is only going to be $199 a month. So if you're not already familiar with our regular prices, this is more of a mid-level offering. Um, we have our metabolic conditioning classes which are a very low cost, uh, inexpensive, for you know, another term, <laughs> entry point to our stuff. But it doesn't give people a very good uh, experience of what we truly have to offer as a company. And we wanted to create a mid-level offering because our semi-private training for three days a week uh, at a year starts at $300 a month and it goes up from there. So this is only a three month commitment and it's $199 a month. We're looking for eight individuals is available on a first come, first serve basis. But if we have people that are interested in a morning group and we can drum up enough interest, that could be an option as well. So if you're wondering what exactly this is gonna be, well, our semi-private training is based on each individual's goal. So we sit down with people and we customize, we, we create completely customized programs that are based on their point A, which we figure out through an extensive assessment process with them, and their point B, which is where they sit down and they explain to us their goals. And we formulate completely customized programs that they can show up at the time of their choice. They sign up online. Um, they don't need to work out with any other individual, except for obviously the coaches that are in the building. Um, but what we're doing with this one is that essentially everyone's getting on the bus and they're going to the same place. And that's why we're looking for people that are looking for people that are specifically interested in fat loss. Because what we're gonna do is in the beginning, the workouts are gonna be a little bit shorter and we're gonna spend more time at the end on coaching nutrition and specifically just simple nutrition habits for the individuals that sign up for this to own over the next few weeks. Um, as we get the habits down more, we're gonna spend less time on the nutrition and we're gonna ramp up the workouts to be a little bit longer. So essentially what we're doing is we're gonna have uh, an increasing density or the amount of work that's done uh, in less time across the month or months of this program, I'm sorry. And we're gonna, we're gonna get nutrition habits down. So the goal is that we are gonna have some phenomenal transformations across 12 weeks. With this first one, this is a great opportunity for people that are just looking to get in shape for the summer. But what we hope is that this will be a kickstart to an improved life. So if you're interested, simply shoot us an email, drop a comment below, or right on the right side of the screen here, if you're on our website, there's a free consultation form. Fill that out. We'll follow up with you, and uh, you can shoot me an email, chris at beyondstrengthperformance.com. That's C-H-R-I-S at beyondstrengthperformance.com. And uh, once again, if you guys have any questions on anything, please do not hesitate to, to reach out. And once again, thanks for joining us.